Good day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. Today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Samuel McNulty and Daniel Felder. Let us take a moment to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and to ask Him to help us to hear what He wants to say to us today. As we come to the end of the liturgical year, the focus of our readings is the end of the world, an event which is intended to raise terror in the hearts of the unjust and the unfaithful, but joy and consolation in the hearts of faithful Jews and Christians. In the first reading, Daniel's message to a persecuted community is one of hope and consolation and a firm assurance that, in the end, God will triumph over evil. God's faithful will experience deliverance. The second reading continues in contrast Christ's single offering, which removes all sin to the daily sacrifices of the temple priest. So efficacious is Christ's sacrifice that he now has no work to do other than to await the final judgment of his enemies. In today's gospel, Mark is also writing to a persecuted community. His message is meant to give hope to, the, hope to faith communities who are oppressed and, are, and to be a warning to those who oppress them. It looks ahead to the time when God will triumph over the powers of darkness. Jesus uses the image of the fig tree to further assure his readers of the imminence of his second coming. This saying of Jesus is a warning to future generations not to get into the business of predicting the time of his return. Instead, we should, we should busy ourselves with leading good and just lives, always ready for the Lord's return, which will come like a thief in the night. Let us pray. God of creation and history, you created all things to be fulfilled and brought to completion at the end of time. Make our hearts ready to greet you in glory in the fullness of time. Let your coming in glory be a time of rejoicing for each of us. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please join us in our opening song in the day of the Lord, number 576, verses 1 and 2.
The Lord is indeed coming to us. The Lord is indeed with us. For these high, let us ask the Lord for his heart and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are holiness and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our model of closeness to our poor. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our strength and our hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heaven. unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time at that time your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some shall live forever others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace but the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.
If I don't think about it, it ain't going to happen. That's one possibility, right? That's denial, yeah. Yeah, but you can do that. Oh, yes, I'm oh, sure. What are the other options? You can help others become ready. Okay, you can help others become ready. What else? Could you become really scared and fixated on it? The end is coming, oh my gosh, and spend your endless days and nights just fretting and worrying and, you know, just thinking about it. Think, 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 think about it. But the end of the result is, is it going to change anything? No. 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 Besides making you really sick. You know, Jack London once wrote, the, pur the, the purpose of a, of a man is not to exist, but to live. He says, my life, 
I don't seek to prolong my life, but to choose my, I don't choose to prolong time, the time of my life, but I choose to live my life. I choose to live, to live my life. And that says something about us. You know, today's gospel, we hear about the dark days are coming when the, when the sun shines no more and the moon gives off no light. The days of tribulations and trying times are coming. Does that feel like the last couple of weeks? <laughs> For those who live in the Northwest, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Today we finally got a little sunlight. But I mean, for the past several weeks, I don't know about you, but I feel like, where is the sun? It ain't gonna, it's not, all I feel is, is the rain keep pouring and pouring. Like, Lord, how much water do we have up there? When is it ever gonna dry up up there? But I mean, you know, it just feels like there's no end in sight. Dark days are coming, and the choice is up to us to be prepared. Not only be prepared, but also to live the life that God has given us here on earth. And to live life, is that, does that happen by accident? No. It doesn't happen by accident. How does it happen? By choice. By choice, by a conscious decision. You know, a while, not recent, a while ago back, a man was released from prison for, 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 for wrongly, for a, for a crime he didn't commit. In, New, in uh, Louisiana, 19, um, he, was, he was put into prison 19, at the age of 19. For 45 years, he's in prison. Now, recently, he, a while back, he was released. Finally, at the age, at the right young age of 65. 65! When a person reached 55, do they have a lot of years left? Not many. Not many. Some of us already reached there, so you know what I'm talking about. 60, you know. What are the choices for this man? Now that, you know, he spent most of his life, adult life, well, he had one year of adult life freedom, but after this, all, it's all in the prison. That's all he knows. Right. So start living life. Mm -hmm. Yes, he can start living life. What are the other options? What would happen, you know, what are the, what, not only options, but what do the people tend to do when they're in prison wrongly, right, right. suffer injustice? They might hang themselves. Okay, and what else? Go back to prison. Go back to prison because that's all they know, right? Yeah. It's understandable. Or what, what other options? Come on, think about in your life. If, how many of you guys have ever suffered injustice? If someone accused you, Rosa, you did this and you know you didn't do it. Sue the government. Sue whoever wrongly accused them. Okay, you can, wrong, you can sue them and what else? Behind that, 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 that sue. Forgive. You can forgive. What are their natural inclination? Anger, anger. Anger, of course. You'll be very angry. You could spend all your life being, being angry. And you can think about all the times the man was in prison. He could have spent 45 years just being angry at the people who wrongfully accused him. Who the lawyers, the, you know, the, the police, you know, the whole, there's a whole list, I'm sure. He could have gone and just being really angry. Being bitter, hatred. But what would that do to the him for 45 years if a person has that much anger and bitterness? Because if they didn't come into prison being angry, guess what? 45 years later, they'll be very angry. And what does that anger do to a person? How many of you guys have known someone who's been at anger for a long time, as long as you know them? It eats them up inside. Yeah, it eats them up on the inside. And forgiveness is a conscious decision that, that, that he chose to make. He said, thank God I'm, I'm free. By his choice to, dis, to forgive, he chose to be free. Not only free from the, from the walls of the prison cell, but more importantly, free in his heart. He says, you know, during that time, I knew the day was coming and I was free. The truth shall be there. Well, he just, the problem is, the downsides, he just didn't know when. He was, you know, as the years go by, he didn't know it was going to be 45 long years. But you know, he's going to make the best out of the remaining years that he has left. And you know, each and every one of us also have, I suspect, we, not I suspect, I know some of you have already had terrible things happen in your life. That the end of the world felt like it's coming from. 
And what are the chance, what are the possibilities of things that have happened in our life that feels like it's the end? A loss of a loved one, loss of a child, or a loss, or, or, or uh, you lost your spouse, you've been married for 50 years. You know, when you lose somebody like that, what happens to your world? It uh, pretty much disintegrates. Yeah, it's over. What's the point of my living? I, this is a person I, you know, over the four, past 50 years, I can't tell you how many meals we have together, how many vacations we have together, how many times we've gone out together. And, you know, now, who am I without the one I love? Who am I, my identity, as a mother, as a, as a spouse? It's gone. Who am I? Or the times you guys have gone in your life when people find out they have macular degenerative disease, where they lose their sight, they know it's coming, you know, it's slowly getting worse. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you lose your eyesight, you might wonder yourself, well, what's the point of my life? I can't see anymore. And you know, you know someday when you can't see anymore, what do you, got, what do you have left? Memories. Just memories. Mm -hmm. And what happens memory over time? You begin to lose, like, God, I hope I don't forget everything that I, remember, you know, I, I have right now. The memories, I want to see every single moment that I have remaining left. I want to see all I can and try to capture it, you know, somehow that I hope, like, I don't never forget it. Or the times you guys in your life when you got, when, you know, when you promised to, to be forever with somebody and they leave you. They abandoned you. And, you, and of course, when they abandon you, not only what also happens, not only do you lose a spouse, but what also happens to your financial, your house. Yeah, you struggle that day. You lose your, not only your, 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 your spouse, but you also lose your, oftentimes lose a house, your income, the stability of your life, and sometimes even your children, your flesh and blood. And sometimes, of course, you also, beyond that, you also sometimes lose friends, that you, mutual friends that you have, and other family members or in-laws that you love, and now they can't see you anymore because of this divorce. And you know, when, when one suffers such an incalculable loss, unimaginable loss, there's a decision that each person has to make that I know some of you, you have made already in your life. You can choose to give up and wallow in your sadness, anger, bitterness, or you can do what? Be loving and forgiving. Yeah, you can be loving and forgiving, but also choose to live your life. Yeah. Choose to go on. Yes, I, is it gonna be easy? It's not gonna be easy, is it? There are days that you must want to give up. I get it. But you know, you, each one of you, is already marked with the sign of faith. When were you marked with the sign of faith? Baptism. At the baptism, when the priest or the deacon put the sign of cross on your forehead, like you are marked forever with God, with Christ. That means forever you belong to Christ. It is equivalent of like a tattoo, but even better than that too. Tattoo you can remove. But this one you can't because forever you belong to him. That you are marked with him that as his sons and daughter. And what does that mean that you are marked with the sign of faith? That he will never leave you. That no matter where you go, your struggles, he'll be there to, to forgive you your sins, to the the sacrament of confession, he'll forever feed you when you feel so empty and lost and so broken on the inside. That Jesus is there through the mystery of the Eucharist and through the gift of the community and peace of your life. He's there to sustain you. But for all this to happen, to feel its effect in our life, what needs to happen? You need to believe. You need to believe. Is it, is it enough to say, yeah, I believe? No. You need to live that. Yes, you need to live that mystery in your life. You need to live it. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we forget that. That there's so much more than, 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 than the exterior sign. The more important thing than the exterior sign. That's important, yes. But also, more importantly, is to live a conscious decision that I choose to live this life. I choose my God. 
And even when times are tough, I know, I believe he's with me, that I'm never alone. And that's what's going to give care you through the day. And sometimes, you know, we forget that. We decide to just, well, I'll decide to go solo. I'll decide to just forego God. If God has abandoned me, well, the heck with him. I will abandon him. But you know, when you abandon God, what is there left? Nothing. 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 And what Jesus reminds us is that, you know, we can say, you know, at the end of the gospel today, you do not know that neither the time nor the day. The gospel of the Lord. Your response? Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Are you praising him because you don't know the time or the day? No. What exactly are you praising him for? For saving your souls. Yes, you don't know when the end will come. But one thing you do know is that his love, his word is everlasting. Even if heaven and earth are washed away or no more, his love remains. His love forever. His word forever remains with you. So I just invite you, my brothers, to keep the word alive in your heart. Because I know in my life that's what gives me joy, strength, that, that the world, you know, that is the world can't give me. And I know for many of you guys, that's what gives you that strength to go through each and every day when you suffered an innumerable loss. You know, when I asked Shirley, well, Shirley, how would you deal with it when you, when you lost your eyesight? And when, when I can only imagine the tragedy, the difficulty. She says, yeah, it's the Lord who helped me through because I know if I give up, you know what, I'm also going to give up. I'm going to give up on my husband, on my children. They needed me. I can't check out of this world. I got to live not only for myself, but for the sake of the people who love me. The, my, my, my life is more than just my own. Because what happens if I check out? They are also, in a sense, I'm also hurting them, allowing them, you know, to, them to suffer. Yeah. And so I choose to live despite the less than ideal situation in my life. And you know, sometimes I'm always amazed by the faith that I see in your life. Because I know some of you guys have chronic pain that, that, for, that for, the, for the latest, for the longest you can remember, you're always in pain. Mm -hmm. The depression. And you know, I have to say, there, there's no easy answer that could, that could you say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, so now there's no more, no problem, no more. Mm -hmm. Does that work that way? No. no. I wish it would. That would make our life a lot better, wouldn't it? Easier. But it's not. But I do know that, you know, despite the suffering in my life, the suffering in your life, you're not alone. And that makes it easier to know that, you know what? I am not alone in my suffering, even when I feel alone. I'm not alone. In my darkest moment, Jesus is there suffering with me. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to keep that in mind, in your, in your mind and heart. Because as the days come go, as we move forward, guess what? Will there be more darkness? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yes, we live in the Northwest. It's, it's winter time coming. The signs of the time is here. What you got for the past week is just a foretaste of, yes, this is the appetizer of, of coming. But you know, in the midst of all this, gloom and gloom that we hear, that we see in the, the signs around us, the weather, politics, whatever else we see coming this upcoming year. One thing that would never change is what? It's God's love, that God is there with you, that you're not alone. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to keep that in your mind and your heart. Don't let the distress of this world outside take away your joy and your peace. And when you do that, Christ is alive in your heart. And the Christ called you to have that peace and joy, not only for yourself, but ultimately, what is it for? For others, to share with one another. And ultimately, that's what it's about. That's what love is about. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to keep that hope and love alive, that in doing so, you and I continue to go forth and share the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us 
together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consensual of the Father, through him all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and glory to the judge to live and to the dead, and to the kingdom of heaven and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one who born in the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Call to be people of mercy on, on, the wor on this world day of the poor. We confidently turn to the Father of mercy with our prayers. That the church will serve as an icon of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That community leaders and civil servants cultivate a preferential option for our poor and vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all who gather here will be nourished by Christ in the Eucharist, mindful that he is the bread for our journey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that we may grow to see Christ in the faces of our poor, our homeless, and our immigrants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may God grant them eternal rest, and may the perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of all, we thank you for, your, for our gifts, seen and unseen. Hear our faith-filled prayer that we offer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for preparation gifts is In God Alone, number 608.
Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be pray joined with theirs in the one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Center of my life, number four nine seven.
Thank you. 